town saves thousands by unplugging the soda machine. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com for your weekly dose of ways we are winning. We've got that story plus giving away motels to veterans. But first, a story submitted to us on Twitter at Corbett Report. Mainstream media and government remain silent as activists from all over the U.S. delivered aid to Flint. And what a way to spend and celebrate a Memorial Day weekend. Activists across the country stepped in where the government's shameful penny-pinching and refusal to accept responsibility should have with hashtag Op Flint. Those activists from across the country largely, but not at all exclusively, associated with the collective that calls itself Anonymous, traveled to Flint yet again over Memorial Day weekend to provide residents with an enormous quantity of donated water. Though itself an extraordinary act of selflessness, the activists didn't and haven't stopped with simply allowing anyone in need to show up and take the precious resources. In adhering to principles the government never could, Op Flint activists visited locals who might not have heard they were in town. And the story from the th the freethoughtproject.com gets into what the activists learned when they actually talked to the people there on the ground in Flint. And you can follow a bunch of the tweets at hashtag OpFlint and see that lots of people from all around, essentially anywhere in the eastern half of the United States, people were involved in heading to Flint to take care of a situation that we could probably easily say at best is government malfeasance, at worst is going to be one of the worst cases of destruction in a town that we've seen in America in quite some time. And again, what a way to celebrate a Memorial Weekend when we're supposedly giving thanks to the veterans who supposedly keep us free. You can see that basically it's not always that way as our second story will show you this week on Good News Next Week. It's our 20th episode. We're putting this up the last day of May, May 31st, 2016. Our buddy Joel Van Doren in the Netherlands noted that instead of watching them decay, L.A. is turning a rundown motels into housing for homeless veterans. This one from Activist Post notes that a deal has been approved by the city of Los Angeles that will allow nonprofit and private developers to modify nuisance motels into apartment housing that will permanently house 500 homeless homeless veterans. According to the LA Times, quote, the housing, the city's housing authority, rather, will issue vouchers funded by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, which will cover residents' rent and provide supportive services, including case management and counseling. Further financing is expected to come from the state's Proposition 41, which directed $600 million in bond money to fund housing for poor and homeless veterans. Now, like a lot of the stories on Good News Next Week, you can find dark linings to these silver clouds. And as some of the comments note on this story, this is in a lot of ways a band-aid on a bullet wound. And there's so much more that could and should be done and that this might not be the best way in the world. And what if these hotels are filled with mold and that's the whole reason that rich regular people weren't in them in the first place. It brings up a lot of questions, but I, I think I like to hope again that these Good News Next Week episodes, are, are, I can't make them 100% everything is sunshine, lollipops, and puppy dogs, and 100% great. A lot of these are learning exercises to get us to think about these ideas and to get us to think about the things in our own town that might be contributing to a not great town. Like our third and final story this week, submitted to us at Eric Moshe. Town of 84 people unplugs the pop machine and saves $9,000 a year. And the town is called Jean Marie River in the Northwest Territories. It is a small town, but they note that when the chief of Jean Marie River found out how much the, ba the pop machines were costing them in electricity, she promptly walked over and pulled the plug. And again, in a lot of these stories, we can find that it's not always good news because as you scroll through, you'll find that at this point, they went in and added smart meters. So they will now be punched into the smart grid and, of course, the Internet of Things and the world of surveillance constantly all the time. However, again, the ideas being talked about here, the soda machines, are they in your town? Are they in your hospitals? Are they in your schools, for God's sakes? Think about all those ways that you can unplug those. Now, we've talked about on Good News Next Week a ton of times, too, all the communities that are putting in refrigerators for the town. How about, here's the idea, here's our request on this week's Good News Next Week, unplug the soda machines, and if you got to plug something else in, plug in that community fridge, which has food for everybody. 
Everybody can submit good news stories, ideas to us using hashtag good news next week, and we are super thankful when you do. I you probably heard about this story, and this is one of those fun ones. Heimlich inventor gets to use his own maneuver on a choking woman. He it was <laughs> he was out. The Cincinnati Enquirer reported that that happened at the Dupree House. And an 87-year-old woman was choking, and he saved her life. The 96-year-old surgeon used the maneuver he invented and is named for. We talk a lot about how the marijuana millions are making it rain, and here's another example. Legal cannabis is literally transforming cities in Colorado, funding roads, schools, charities, and very much more. Cameras capture rare snow leopard pictures, and this is that time of year where we'll note... The mainstream media goes crazy and thinks that the only news in the world is shark attacks and zoo attacks and bad kind of animal stories. Let's maybe have a little bit of good animal news as some very rare leopards were spotted using some cameras in northwest China. We've also got a rare sighting of our own Frankie the Cat here in this Good News Next Week episode. Meanwhile, as long as we're talking about a couple of good animal stories here in Portland, Oregon... A dog was about to be euthanized. He was all hooked up. He was seconds away from it. And one of the techs noticed, hey, there's a tick on his ear. They knocked off the tick. He was unparalyzed and his life was literally saved. And it is worth noting that Dove Lewis Animal Hospital here in Portland, Oregon, where this story happened, is one of the best. You got to love this story. And they actually did it on purpose as a prank. They left their glasses on the floor and made some modern art at San Francisco's Museum of Modern Art, and people started to take pictures of it. Again, bringing up the question that just because it's hanging in a museum, is it really art? And we love these kind of stories, too, because they are great ways, like Jello Biafra said, of monkey-wrenching the New World Order. They are sharing music across the U.S.-Mexico border's metal fence. Sharing music, always a good idea, like... No, that's not James Corbett, as someone noted. That's Moby. He gave away four hours of ambient music designed for yoga and meditation, and you can download it easily, and it is quite smooth, and it is quite meditational. We also give away media here on Media Monarchy, way more than four hours every single week, and we can only do that because we are listener-supported media since 2005. If you head on over to MediaMonarchy.com slash support, you can find PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, a post office box, a number of ways you can give a little and we can give a lot. That's another episode of Good News Next Week, some of the solutions-oriented ways we are winning, and that was episode 20 for May 31st, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, my friends, like Jello Biafra says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Take care.